we're watching Japan versus Kazakhstan Kawakami versus Kabdelov of Kazakhstan this for the bronze medal oh and the Kazakhstan drops himself into a hold oh good attempt uh, look like uh, Diashi Barai from gone extreme right no score in the other match Gutsch of uh, Germany versus Lee of Korea three minutes eight there three minutes seven here so both matches pretty much at the same point nil nil Kawakami of Japan and works really well with the different changes of stance. The bent oh. over posture suits him well and he can adapt very easy to working with the Ochigari to Chimata. Yep. And he's done this all day with a, a lot of the Eastern Bloc. Yeah. Because, of course, they're going into so a lot of the players like the Kazakhstan are going into Jigatai. But that suits the Japanese. Yes. And the Japanese can stand up now, do some judo. They can move around with freedom because they know they're not going to get their legs taken. That's right. It gives them a lot more confidence to exactly. come in. Oh, and beautiful oh. footwork again from uh, Fantastic follow Kawakami. Through. He's very, very good with his feet. Oh, fantastic. I think a score was given there. Yuko was given. I thought that was a bit generous. thought the Kazakhstan had turned onto his stomach yes, there. I wouldn't have given that a Yuko. I wouldn't have given a Yuko for that. Again, the Kosoto. Oh. Using his feet like another set of hands, gripping on onto the ankle and working. Their upper body movement is fantastic and control that they have with the arms. These two might know each other from the same uh, continent, obviously. They've maybe met in the continental championships. But Kawakami doesn't look threatened at all. It's still nil-nil on the other match there. The German athlete Gutsch versus Hilly of Korea. It's still nil-nil. Minute and 32 left there. Very close match there. There is a Shido for the Korean. And now a second Shido for the Korean. Which means that Gutsch takes the lead. Watching the performance of the German all day, I, I would say that the German's favourite for this bronze medal. I would say so. He's been strong the whole day. Yes. Oh, beautiful uh, Marate Sienagi attempt from uh, Kawakami. Very unlucky not to uh, get the score, and uh, Kabdelov did well to get off that. Kawakami was really deep. Look at how deep nice he got under deep. there. How the hell did the uh, Kazakhstan get off that? Normally, you'd say that was definitely Ippon. Yeah, it was definitely going to be an Ippon. Yeah. That's what I have found with the judo. The, the, the youngsters' aerial awareness when they're actually in the air is fantastic. They're so has, flexible, so definitely. agile. The Ashiwaza again. He's brilliant with that. 
and he uses it well to set them up. He takes them in one direction, then comes back across with the tired Toshi or the Sianagi. Totally breaking up the balance of his opponent. Thirty seconds. Thirty seconds on the other match, and one eighteen here. Kawakami cruising his way. Sure. Good job from the German. Rolf Meider for German. Now then, we're back with this match here. Jap's just got to get his leg out, and he does. Oh, he just gets out. But the Kazakhstan managed to turn onto his front, and uh, Matei is called. There's 22 seconds left here. Can Kabdelov produce something? Well, it's a situation. It's all or nothing now. And. Uh, And there's the time on this match and the bronze medal goes to Kawakami of Japan and uh, Kabdelov of Kazakhstan didn't really have any solutions to the judo of uh, Kawakami whose uh, work rate was extremely high, he kept moving, used his feet very well, very very skillful and he might be one to look, to, look for in the future. I would have thought so. He's very unorthodox, not as a traditional Japanese player for men anyway. So what I do like, he's able to adapt quite easy to a bent over stance with That's the right. European competitors. That's right. And, uh, 